Unternehmergeschichten. Unterwegs mit Moderatorin Anni Liebninger. Today we have a special episode and ihr könnt es schon hören, diese Folge ist auf Englisch. Today we will talk about fighters mindset and how it affects business. We speak with Muay Thai fighter and online business entrepreneur Sean Fagan. He will tell us interesting things about his fighter career, how it is to live in Thailand, but also about starting an online business. But first, let's start at the beginning. So, growing up, I had a bunch of different jobs. I was an ice skating instructor. I was a pizza delivery driver. I was a lifeguard. I was a martial arts instructor. I was a waiter. I was a bunch of different things. And I never really fit in with one specific thing. And I never really liked having a boss. Uh, even though I've had great bosses in the, in the past, uh, I just never really liked someone telling me what to do. And so I knew that I kind of had to start my own thing at some point. And so, long story short, I, uh, I fell in love with Muay Thai. And at the same time I fell in love with Muay Thai, I also read books like The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And that gave me the idea of being able to create a, a lifestyle business around my passion. And so a little over 10 years ago, I started that, uh, not really knowing what I was doing at all. But it took some time and a lot of uh, a lot of late nights. But now I'm in a in a very good place, and I'm very uh, happy with where uh, my business has kind of grown to. And when was the time where you decided to move to Thailand? Uh, we moved to Thailand three years ago, but I've been to Thailand almost every year for the past 10 or 11 years. And it just took me a while to convince my wife Liz, but once I convinced her, then uh, we made the move over here. Um, we just, the, the way of life here is a little bit more relaxed than it is back in uh, New York. And we like, uh, we live on a small island here and it's just a lot more easygoing and uh, nice energy, better weather. And of course it's uh, the Muay Thai capital of the world. So. Uh, yeah, we moved about three years ago, but it was it was a plan to move here uh, for for a while before that. So uh, back then in New York, you had an own dojo, or how you started there? So back in New York, I, I trained at a gym. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a trainer and a training partner. It was mainly just three of us, but I started there, and I would travel from. New York to Thailand often and then just uh, take as many fights as I could in New York and in Thailand and me and my training partner kind of grew together and uh, it, was, it was a really really nice experience and then uh, now we're both uh, at a good spot but no I never owned a gym or a dojo but I do plan to in the future but I have a, a very big vision for what I want and so I want to make sure I do it right And I want to make sure that um, I I'm not done with fighting, but I that's not my main focus, uh, and I'm not sure if that is the time yet. Let's go into um, this moment where you and Liz decided to pack all your stuff and go to Thailand. It's a completely different thing to live in the US than living in Thailand. So uh, tell us something about this change and what you thought then. Sure. So Liz and I first traveled to Thailand together about seven years ago. And we stayed in Thailand for six months and we traveled all around. We went to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. We, we went everywhere. Uh, just to get a feel for what Thailand was like and um, just to kind of get away from the craziness back at home because seven years ago uh, Liz's mother died and there was a lot of just stress on the family and there, there was a lot of things that weren't uh, good back in New York and so we wanted to kind of get away, get more clear-minded and just be in our own energy. And so 
I brought her to Thailand and we traveled around and we really enjoyed this one island called Koh Phangan. And I remember talking with her saying, like, we're, we're going to move here later. Like, we're, we're going to end up moving here. And we went back home uh, to New York and we just started working. She went to school, uh, got her journalism degree. Uh, I was working and training and fighting. But the goal was to eventually move to Thailand. So when we did finally move to Thailand three years ago, it was almost like expected. Like we were already planning to do that, you know. So it wasn't as crazy as as it might have, as it kind of is. It, it's funny because when I get, it's so normal to me now living here that when I talk to other people outside of Thailand, especially people uh, like my friends and family back in the U.S., I forget how weird it is what I do for a living and how I live in Thailand and everything. But I'm really grateful for it because the the, the culture, the people are, are very pleasant and, and nice. And uh, just the country is beautiful. The food is delicious. It's super cheap. And so we, we've thought about like moving back to the U.S., and we thought about moving to Europe. We've thought about moving pretty much everywhere you can imagine. But nothing really feels as good as Thailand right now. Maybe something will in the future. But right now, uh, especially during the middle of a pandemic, it just uh, makes sense to, to be here. Uh, that's, that's good. I think, yes, when you prepared four years to move to Thailand, then it's super normal for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And... When you moved to Thailand, you started to train there and Liz started to make her own business? Or what was it about? Yeah, to so, mm. so I started training uh, over 10 years ago. So it was before, like when we moved to Thailand, I was already a pro fighter. I was already mm -hmm. uh, in it. And so the, the idea was when, I, when we moved here was I was going to try mm -hmm. to fight as much as I could because uh, fighters can only fight for so long, you know, but yeah. with business, I can do business for a lot longer than I can and fight. So the idea was for me to fight, for her to continue doing what she enjoyed doing, which was yoga, training, living healthy. And then she also uh, started her own online business. Um, it was kind of, it wasn't something that she thought of initially, mm -hmm. but It kind of just came naturally, and now she's really enjoying it. She's uh, getting a feel for how she wants to do her business, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to kind of teach her a little bit and be there for her when it comes to just uh, knowing what mistakes to avoid and what things to do and what things not to do. But, yeah, now we're both in a very good place. We, we both make – living online and we're, we're very grateful because we know just with the way the world is right now not everyone has a job not everyone's in a good situation and so the fact that we're stuck in thailand and able to make money online uh we're just very very grateful you started to make money online you started a course an online course so it's something completely new if you just train in a dojo or in a uh, center and how that started to produce videos and create a community to train with online so it was a lot of mistakes i didn't know what i was doing for a long time and so i was lucky enough to meet some people online who uh did Uh, online business as well but in different niches so like i uh a guy in the jiu-jitsu niche reached out to me uh seven years ago or so and he started to teach me a little bit about how to make money online through what i was doing in the muay thai niche and before i was just trying to i didn't know how to make money so i was trying to sell ebooks i was trying to make money with advertising But none of that was really making anything. And so he told me about making video courses. And I made my first video course, which was about the clinch. It's called Clinch King. And that made me like five or six thousand dollars, which was a lot of money. Uh, that like I'd never made that much money online before. I was like, wow, this is like this is 
crazy. <laughs> so then I realized uh, the power. Yeah, then I realized the power of uh, video mm -hmm. and how, especially in a sport like Muay Thai, video is going to be the number one thing that people watch. And so I started to just learn a little bit more about how to make good videos, what type of videos people wanted. Uh, I was able to build a, a big community on Facebook and YouTube. And so people would always tell me what they want to see. And so I would just make videos based off what people wanted to see. And then most recently I created The Fighter's Body, which is my membership site. And that was – the timing was honestly like perfect because I made it right before the pandemic. I made it in January 2020. And then the pandemic started like the next month. Uh, but before that, I was trying to figure out a way to create a, a membership site so I could have the recurring uh, monthly income yes. as mm -hmm. opposed to just the one uh, sale. You know, So once I figured that out, it's been a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. But um, it's something that I'm really proud of and that I know it helps a lot of people. And I'm lucky enough that people want that kind of workout. And so I'm able to make money off of it. And so it's just uh, – it's crazy how things work out. I, I never thought that I would be doing what I'm doing, you know. But you just kind of go with the flow. You keep an open mind. And it's worked out so far. <laughs> go with the flow. It's perfect timing to make an online business. You start it and then you have to have it. So you were mm -hmm. one of the first – who had a perfect side, perfect training. So yeah, if you watch your videos, you're just a human. And I love that because you also make mistakes. You just train with the people, with them together, 45 minutes. And yeah, you're just a human. You make mistakes. But I think that's mm -hmm. natural or that's something yeah, that people I, I like. Try to not, mm. Yeah, I try to not make it too perfect, you know, because mm. I'm not perfect. And so I like... Uh, being a little rough around the edges and, and just being a little raw. I curse, you know, I swear, I I mess up a lot. And so uh, I'm glad, though, that my uh, my members uh, can laugh at it and, and enjoy it and enjoy me just being who I am. I'm a guy from New York, so I'm going to curse uh, quite a bit. And so. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's good that you started unperfect and just uh, told your people – tell me what you want to have and do it with me and uh, not waiting to have a perfect thing from the beginning till the end and then start it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's fine. Yes, a lot yeah. of it is uh, jump before you're ready. You know, yeah. like, yeah. And it's scary because you don't know if it's going to work, yeah. but that's entrepreneurship. That's just like you got to take a lot of risks. And I, I've <laughs> yeah, learned to true. take a lot of risks through fighting and so it's helped me take a lot of risks in a uh, business as well which have helped that's perfect so you told us you made some mistakes and you learned a lot of that how is it for you as a fighter to learn from mistakes and from failure so learning from uh, failure as a fighter has a lot of similarities to learning from failure as an entrepreneur. But the thing about fighting is that like you learn a lot quicker because it's an immediate response. Like if I lose a fight, like I lost a fight. Or if I get punched in the face, then I, I did something wrong right then and right there. With business, you don't know if you do anything wrong uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of just like trust a lot that you kind of know what you're doing. But meanwhile, you have no idea what you're doing. You're just guessing and hoping for the best, you know? So one thing I have learned though is that like failure is necessary. It's like a hundred percent necessary in order for you to be able to actually learn and grow and become successful yeah. because without making those mistakes, you'll never know the, the mistakes to avoid. Mm -hmm. And people can tell you, Uh, don't do this or don't do that. But until you actually experience it for yourself, uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna resonate. It's not gonna make as much sense. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I like fighting and entrepreneurship both for the reasons that like 
it, you'll be successful if you just kind of choose to continue moving forward. If you can, if you choose to learn from your mistakes and also like with fighting, especially in Muay Thai in Thailand, when they ask you, so this is a big difference between like living in the U S compared to living in Thailand. When people ask you about fighting in the U S they'll ask you what your record is, how much wins you have. In Thailand, they'll ask you how many fights you have. They don't care about the wins or the losses. They just care about how much you've fought. And that's kind of how I look at business and fighting as well. It's not about the wins and the losses. It's about perseverance and just moving forward and and learning from whatever mistakes you made. So uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs, but there wouldn't be ups if there weren't downs. Of course, you know, yeah, so yeah. you need the highs and the lows. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah that's true. So, what you can um, tell our listeners are the good things about a fighter mindset. Mm. So, my thinking on fighting has grown and evolved quite a bit since when I first started. But one of the main things that I've learned in regards to the fighter mindset, well, there's so many things, right? But the the discipline of just showing up and putting in the work no matter what, no matter how you feel, and just having that kind of work ethic is extremely beneficial. With fighting, it's, it's more tangible. Like you, you know that if you don't train, then when you step into the ring, you're gonna get your ass whooped. And yeah, so like yeah. you need to train, right? With business, it's not as obvious. And sometimes you can kind of fake it till you make it. You can't fake it in fighting. Like you're either good or not, you know? So with the mindset, with the fighter mindset idea, is that you actually have to put in the work when no one else is watching, when no one else is paying attention to you. You still have to wake up at five in the morning and go for a run. You still have to watch what you eat when no one else is telling you what to eat. You have to really take a lot of self-ownership and really just value yourself and value not disappointing yourself. And so developing the type of mindset where you're just trying to make yourself feel proud, um, I think is probably the, the best thing that I've learned uh, as a fighter. It doesn't matter what my my fans or family think like obviously it, it does but it doesn't matter as much as what i think about myself and for example in one fight that i had i was losing very badly i was getting my ass kicked like the guy was just beating me up like from round one to round four my ribs were broken I, he broke my nose and he knocked me down in the fourth round and all of my Uh, friends and fans were around, right? And um, I got knocked down, and I remember thinking, like, I could just lay down here and just pretend that I can't get back up and no one would blame me, like, because I'm losing and, like, I'm getting beat up really badly. But once I thought that, I realized that I was thinking that. I was like, well, I would know that I could get up, but I didn't get up. And I don't think I'd be able to live with myself. And I'm thinking about this all in like mm. a second, yeah. you know, all in in the middle of a fight. And so I got back up and just getting back up really meant a lot to me. But then I also ended up winning the fight in the fifth round with a knockout. And that was just such a euphoric feeling, like knowing that you can be getting your ass kicked and like lose – be losing so badly and still come back and win. And that's just like how it works with life and everything too. Like you can be losing, but as long as you keep picking yourself back up and fighting, then who knows what, what's possible, you know? Uh, that's great. That's really great, yes. <laughs> It's good to tell, just keep on fighting until the end. And if you're not finished, it's not the end. <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing yeah so let's come to your plans for the future mm -hmm. 
what's your thing you have on your bucket list what you want to make or want to have? So for a while now, I've wanted to, so it's taken a while for me to understand what I want because mm -hmm. what, what I want always changes, right? But ultimately what I want is be able to impact the world in, in a way that creates a ripple effect of like positivity, right? Mm -hmm. And so in order to do that, I, uh, first need to continue growing my online business and keep growing my my influence so this way I can be able to have more impact in the ways that I want to have impact. In in that regard, I want to open up a like a Muay Thai resort. It's because we host Muay Thai vacations, right? So we've been to Greece we host in Greece and Costa Rica, Spain, Thailand. And so we, we know what makes a really good resort and what people really love. And so we want to create a resort here in Thailand that's Muay Thai and yoga and just like a lifestyle resort, just a health resort that is also a part like a animal uh, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So we love dogs. We have two stray dogs that we've adopted here in Thailand. And the dog... The stray dog population in Thailand is really bad. Uh, the, there's just homeless dogs everywhere, and they're not taken care of. And so we want to be able to help in, in a way that uh, gives these dogs just a, a second chance. And ideally, we also extend it to other animals because elephants are pretty badly mistreated here in Thailand as oh, well. Yeah. And so are monkeys and, and tigers and stuff. And so if we can create a, a space where these animals can live happily and be like loved and taken care of for, uh, that would really just make me, it, it's kind of selfish because it would just make me feel really good. And so that's why I want to do it. But I know that it would also be doing a lot of good to these animals and then being able to have people come to this resort where they can train Muay Thai and do yoga and eat healthy, then also volunteer and walk dogs and pet animals and this kind of stuff. It just seems like a really great environment, and I, I want to create a community and an environment that people are just giving back, living consciously, living purposefully, and I, I have no doubt that I'll be able to do that. It's just a matter of when now, you know? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But it sounds good. So it's Thank a good you. place for everyone, <laughs> for the humans yeah. and the animals. And, uh, great. <laughs> Perfect. So, you're planning to do that with Liz together? Yes. How was it for you to grow together and to yeah, live that new feeling of entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy life. Um, I'm so thankful for Liz being by my side. She was with me when I was making no money. And I was like a loser, you know, and but now she's with me where I'm like successful and I'm able to spoil her and everything. And she's really been so supportive of my crazy ideas, because usually when I tell people my ideas or when I used to tell people my ideas, people wouldn't believe me. Now people believe me because I'm actually doing it, mm -hmm. you know, but before they thought it was all like before I moved to Thailand and fought Muay Thai and ran a business. Saying that before you did that sounds crazy. And yeah. So I get it, but no one believed in me, but Liz did. Mm -hmm. And so having her believe in me was a really important uh, factor in my success. And although there's been a lot of ups and downs, it's been mostly ups. And even our downs, even our the obstacles that we've had to overcome as a couple, um, have been really difficult, and we've had to do a lot of work. Um, it's been really a you know, really insightful experience and we've been able to learn a lot about each other and about how we can be better people, how we can be better uh, partners. Um, it's been really nice to be able to share this experience with her. I, I wouldn't want to share with anyone else and I'm just so happy to know that like our belief in one another mm -hmm. has uh, helped us get to where we are now. 
and we feel like we're just beginning. We feel like we're just getting started too, which is exciting. I think so too. That's just the beginning of something great. I think it's a good mixture because you have the Fighters Body family and the Fighters Body plan where you made a thick mm -hmm. point for yoga. And normally mm -hmm. the people are thinking, okay, like fighter uh, is not going on the mat and doing yoga, but it's... Uh -huh. A great benefit for the fighter or for the martial artist to do yoga. So mm -hmm. I think that's so perfect that you just say, "Yeah, okay, that's that's in our plan, and that's good for you, and that's my list, and she will teach you." <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, we just because like we really balance each other out, and mm -hmm. that's kind of how yoga and Muay Thai balance each other out. And Liz is yoga and I'm Muay Thai. But I also do yoga and she also does Muay Thai. It's like, it's yin and yang. Mm -hmm. And we really feel like it's important to have that balance in life. Um, otherwise, you, you're out of balance and then you're just not going to be able to enjoy life as much as you as you can. And like we're always trying to figure out the right balance between things. Um, it's always a learning process. You know, We're never going to be able to figure it all out. But that's like the beauty of martial arts. It teaches you that like you're always striving to be perfect with your technique. Mm -hmm. But you know that you'll never be perfect with your technique. And that's like just being a human. Like you try to be the best human you can, but you know that there will always be room to be better. And that's the beauty of life. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to grow and learn and help people while we're doing it. And we're we're in a position we're in a very lucky position where we can actually do that. And so we're gonna keep doing that. What's the thing you want to give our listeners so like tip or I don't know, something well, you want to say, tell them? Yeah, I mean in whatever direction you decide to go in your life whether you want to be an entrepreneur, whether you want to be a, a fighter, whether you want to be an astronaut, whatever you want to be. Uh, one thing that's really held true with me is that you just really have to believe in it. Like If you don't believe in your vision, and if you're not clear in your vision, um, then it's going to be really difficult to move forward in a, in a efficient way. And so, The main two things that I usually tell people when they're asking for like business or life advice is that one, you need to figure out what your purpose in life is. And if you don't know what that is, you, you need to figure it out. And once you figure that out, now you gotta believe in it and start taking action to do it. Mm -hmm. And those are simple ideas, but they're they're hard to actually implement and hard to do but uh yeah belief self-belief and like just being really clear on what your vision is is uh extremely important otherwise you'll just yeah otherwise you won't be doing much you know thank you sean for this awesome interview it was a pleasure if you want to know more about sean fagan the fighters body program or muay thai vacations just hop over to instagram at Annie Anderlein Liebminger or the Muay Thai guy, you get every information you want to have. Would be awesome to see us on Instagram. And don't forget to write us a comment how you liked this episode. And we see us next week. Bye. Unternehmergeschichten. Unterwegs mit Moderatorin Annie Liebminger.